Miners came from far and wide, can you hear the widow's wail? They worked the pits at Edmund, Swathe and Darley in the dale. The bairns have lost their fathers, some say that it's a shame. The inquest at the mason's arms, the owners shift the blame. The Barnsley bed is silent now, the Jarrett's holds its breath. The epitaph says it all, in the midst of life we are in death. In the midst of life, we are in death. That was Ian Macmillan saying that. My poem, all about the Woodbury Dale mine disasters. There were three colliery explosions, and it all happened oh a long time ago. Three pits exploded. The Darley main, the Edmunds main, and the Swathe main. 300 men and it's next village here and that's on the tombstone that's on the headstone for the Swathe Memorial up in St Thomas's Church so let's go and find out a little bit more about it all Worsbury Dale two and a half mile south of Barnsley on the busy A61 Sheffield Road this is the end of the village and that on the left is the St Thomas's Church and in the air there's a tombstone, an epitaph to the Swathe Main Disaster of 1875. If you look careful you'll see it. It's just a one street um, village, small village, but what we intrigue with is these three disasters. There are three pits in this village, the Darley Main, the Edmunds Main and the Swathe Main. And they all had one thing in common, they all worked the Barnsley Bed Seam. The Barnsley Bed Seam were very fiery, explosive, with an high methane content. We're just going down the dale here, Woodsby Dale, and the first pit we come to is the Darley Main, which exploded in 1849. And we're just coming up to a pub on the left called the Darley, named after the Darley Main pit. 75 men got killed in 1849. Going down the dale past the Methodist Church and now we come to the crossroads at the bottom. At the bottom there was a pub called the Mason's Arms on the left where the inquests for these disasters were held. The Darley Main exploded in 1849 with 75 fatalities, Edmunds Main 1862 59 fatalities and the Swathe Main 1875 143 fatalities, a total of 300 men in 26 years. The Edmunds men, which were the second pit wobbler, were down to the right there, down the Edmunds Road. Towards the Luden crossing. The bottom of the river railway, the Great Central Line which closed in 1981. Station Road, still going down Station Road. Mm -hmm. 
So we're just approaching the Luden crossing. The Swath, Swath main, go to the left, roughly half a mile. So this is the Luden, the old railway crossing. And we're going up to the old station of Duff Cliff. Very scenic route now actually. The railway line here, this was a great central line. And there was a station here called Duff Cliff. All the bits have gone now. This is Duff Cliff in 1953. And this is where our first start work, 1962. Barnsley lay at the heart of the South Yorkshire coal fields, and on leaving Barrow Colliery, the coal working joins the former Great Central Railway's Sheffield to Barnsley line. Duff Cliff Station now. Look at difference. It's gone back to nature. The Barnsley bed is silent now. The Jarrett's holds its breath, the epitaph says it all. In the midst of life, we are in death. This is the Great Central Railway in 1981, approaching Swath just before closure. As the line climbs at 1 in 143, easing to 1 in 415, the line passes under the former Midland Railway route from Barnsley to Sheffield. And this is today above the old railway track on the Pennine Trail. 1892 Ordnance Survey map which shows Swathe Main. Big bit it was. Again, back to the Pennine Trail, and you can see the hamlet of Swath in the right hand corner. And in that meadow, that's where the pit was. This is 1950s Swath, filmed from an aeroplane, we think, showing the old miners' terraced houses and the hamlet. Roughly 300 yards from the uh, colliery. Terrace towers is low. Again, the site of the pit in this meadow. This is the view from the other side of the viaduct. The Swathe Viaduct, LMS line, London Midland Scottish, from Leeds to Sheffield. Still going today. And this is an archive film. Filmed from Swathe Bridge on Whitecross Lane, Barnsley, approached from Wombwell and after passing under the bridge, ran through Monk Spring Junction, where the now closed line to Codworth South diverged to the right. Closed in 1964, the line to Codworth formed part of the Chapeltown Loop that allowed trains to bypass Wath and Swinton. back on the Pennine Trail and don't forget the miners would have had to walk three, four, five miles from Woodsborough Common, Platts Common, Woodsborough Bridge, Woodsborough Dale. The population uh, of Woodsborough multiplied by six in the early years of Queen Victoria's reign. They came for the coal, Klondike. The small signal box on the left is Luden Crossing and the climb steepens to around 1 in 103. 
Luden crossing today. Very quiet and peaceful. A lot of the locals come here walking and use this fishing lake. As we go back on the 1981 train, we've left Luden on his way to Woodsbridale Crossing or Edmunds Road, where the Edmunds Pit was, Edmunds Main. So here we go, we're approaching the Edmunds. This is Wurzbridale Crossing. The two Class 76 logos are probably another set of banking logos. This section of the line from Wath to Silkstone Junction was strictly freight only. The site of the old Edmunds Main Colliery. We believe these are the remnants of the shafts. It's very, very quiet today. The Garden of Woodsborough, the court is called. As I say, Edmunds Main Colliery. Anybody who knows the area, it's just down from Pod, Podle Oil or Boatman's Rest in Woodsboroughdale. Eighteen ninety-two Edmunds Main, just closed. This is a, a drawing from the London Illustrated News, Edmunds Main, in all its glory. We think this is one of shafts. So here we are above the Edmunds Main, where 59 men got killed in 1862. So lovely and peaceful now. That's the sewerage farm, and we're just zooming into the uh, boatman's rest, the pod, or pod oil as the locals call it. Straight above the Edmunds, look. The Garden of Woodsborough. That's the River Dove at the side. So peaceful. On the right is Glasshouse Crossing Box. So we're at the Allo Ground, Paul Darlow, nice to see you Paul, at the Allo Ground of the National Union of Mine Workers and we're very, very privileged and we're trying to find a bit more information Paul about these well, explosive pits. Well look at all this lot, this is absolute treasure trove, it's, uh, this is Oaks statue of course and uh, this is Oaks um, Memorial, absolutely what it's like a it's like a church, isn't it? It's absolutely top drawer. And of course, this is where all delegates used to sit in, to, in AD at my old mines. I can see old banners here, look. Old Yorkshire banners. Oh, yeah, absolutely wonderful. Nostal, look at all this. And these are just a few of them, don't forget. This all will be full. Freiburg, Kingsley, that wouldn't last bit to shoot. Cornwood, of course, that's what started the strike. Up the Oaks, look, 1866, big explosion. But it's absolutely wonderful. Look at, look at that ceiling. Oh, it's like some sort of chapel, isn't it? Some sort of mausoleum, some sort of cathedral, isn't it? Absolutely brilliant. Well, what a treasure trove. We've already found this old uh, scroll at Sway, the 1875 uh, memorial. But look at all this, it's absolutely top drawer. We've got this Lundill, which was 1857. Um, Lundill, so it's 
eight year after Darley. So this is in middle and it all again. Again, Barnsley bed, common factor, nine foot seam, Barnsley bed, fiery. Uh, and again, well, it's disgusting. Uh, act of God, accidental death. Here we, we keep on with this. So we've found this South Yorkshire Miners Association minutes. Don't forget, it won't call it anywhere, we want Miners Association. And here we go, look at this. 1871, July the 31st. And we've got minutes of Edmunds, Maine. The look. So what will this apply to, Paul? 170. What, what's that relate That's to? That's your members. 170 members. And paid to the union, 13 pound. Yeah. 18 shilling and five pence. Right. So. That's your fort, like, fort 1871. Balancing. When did Edmunds go up? Uh, Edmunds, what, second then? So let's find that. Edmunds, Maine. 1862, it blew. 1862, so this is 1871, which is nine years. Nine years after explosion, people are still going and there's 170 men. Hmm, interesting. So look at this, this tells us also, it's weird how we all. Oaks, Hardsley Oaks, the year, Hardsley Oaks, December 10th, 1866, two days before it blew. Just bear that in mind, how many members? Uh, 275. 275. With, with two new members. With two new members. Right, so when it fires, July the 7th. 7th, just after it fires, it were Christmas, of course, Hardsley Oaks. 16, wow, look at that, yep, so that, that, that tells story, doesn't it? Uh, England's biggest pit disaster, wow. Darley, Maine, 1854, 75 were killed in 1854, so we've got in, uh, Union 1864, which is roughly 10 years, it's 10 years after explosion, Darley, Maine, 116. So that's still going. That, that was 1864. And uh, Edmunds, Maine, 110 members. But don't forget this, Paul. They're not, they won't all at Union. Exactly. That what problem. They won't all, it won't uh, like a closed shop like what we knew. You know, so, but anyhow, it's all very interesting. Yeah. So, Chris, we're trying to find. Swathe, but there's no mention. We think that it merged, it was part Union branch, what Edmunds, which was its sister Pete. So that's why, obviously, they just have one, one branch. Uh, 1875. This is what, what, what date is this, Chris? This is uh, September 8th. 73. 73. Which is two years. It's two years before it blew. Yeah. yeah, so that's that's answer. It'll be Edmunds. Yeah. yeah. So I can't thank you enough, Paul. Here's me and here's me heart. Right, Chris. Yeah. Absolutely wonderful. Top drawer. I'll send you a check it post. The miners came from far and wide. Can you hear the widow's wail? They worked the pits at Edmunds, Swathe and Darley in the Dale. I've got Eric Gillard in car, my old mate and neighbour, and we're just going up Dale, as we say. Right, Eric, we are. And Janet's Bill is just to start approximately here. The Saturday, did they? Yeah. Mm. Since there, that's where Janet's used to start. It went up there and right up onto that road up there, straight right. up, up top there. Mm. And it was about a 12 foot strip of old, old land. Yeah. And then there were two folds these, like these, two yeah. places with back to back houses in. But they only had one front door. Oh no, back door? No back door. Just one front door. Go back to back. So it's all this area here? All this left hand side here. So there used to be a shop here, if it's still here. That shop there, that used to be a shop to start on Green Street. It had gone that way. This this workshop, then there were about Half a dozen houses here, mm -hmm. all terraced houses here. 
Mm. And as you can see, approximately here, that's where it was, and there were steps going down, and Jarrett's were there that we were just come through. Steps were going down to that shop there. We used to walk down here, but we didn't go through Jarrett's because there used to be little gangs that used to attack you if you went down when you were kids. <laughs> so, so, so we never. So there's no through. change. That there's no, no change. No change. <laughs> no. Yeah. So. That's all that's been there, Eddie. That, that, that chapel. That's that on shop, Yeah, that chapel and, and that shop's been, always been there. This way your street, then, Eddie? Yeah, this one up here. Dennis. That's James there. Street. That's James Street. That's not altered at all, then, is it? No, that's not James. James Street. Mm. It's changed this way. The car's parked on the old cars. Yes. Um, right, so we, where were you born? Where were you? Number 26, I was born. 26? But, uh, well, I was born at number 17, but we lived in number 26. It's, uh, that white door? That white door there. That's right. that where I was. And my grandma lived at number 17, that side. Right. She said, it's a little bit smarter, but it's still basically the same, isn't yeah. it? You know? We had no lexic. Do you have no electric? No electric, no. But gas mantles? Well, we had, we had a flickering flame, because gas mantles used to get broke every time we... Uh. So they were all built for miners, these, um, these houses, all these tenements. As I said, Jarrett said 58. Now, we're just going down, this is, this is Clarkson this is Street. Street. This is not Dalton either, this is just... Uh, no, and this was site at Dalyman, in this yard here. We'll yeah. just ride in here, we get across this busy junction here. to Doncaster to see Brian Elliott, the uh, famous mining historian and author. Thanks a lot for seeing us Brad, it's wonderful to That's give us... That's alright David, you're, yeah. most, you're most welcome and yeah. to come and have a chat with me. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, Brian's a partly go on lad, an expert as everybody knows. We concentrated though Brian on the three Wisbradale uh, mine disasters. Well. Unfortunately, at this time, in the well, from the 1830s, 1840s onwards, Barnsley was very much a hot spot when it came to pit disasters. In the decade after Husker, there were five disasters in the Barnsley area, mm. uh, counting for about 170, going on for 200 lives. Of That's 1838 to 1849. That's right, right. yeah. And goodness knows how many, uh, Dave, Casualties there were, people yeah, yeah. that were unrecorded, who yeah, were yeah. badly injured, eventually went back to work or had to pack in, pack in the jobs. Uh, we don't know that yet. And two of these five disasters were in the Woosborough yeah. area. One at Darley made in 1847 when there were uh, six miners killed on a black Friday at the end of January. And then in 1849, the one that you, you mentioned, 75 yeah. dead yeah. on a Wednesday, Wednesday 24th right. of January again. Yeah. And then in 1857, Barnsley became news headlines when um, in, in, in the Wumwell area, Lund, the Lund Hill Lund Colliery Hill. exploded mm. and 189 men and boys were were killed in this disaster. Which is only, as crow flies, about two miles off. Not far away. Same uh, sea, uh, badly bit. Right. So, yeah. that, again, that fo the Husker disaster and Lund Hill uh, was, it was featured in, in, in the yeah. magazines, like the Illustrated London yeah. News, the popular yeah. magazines and increasing lum lumber of newspapers. But the 1860s, 
was even a worse decade for Barnsley. Yeah. There were even more disasters, and that climaxed in 1866 with the Oaks disaster. Oaks, yeah. When, according to official records, 361 yeah. boys yeah. were killed. But it was like, it was like, uh, Dave, you could try and imagine every year or every other year a jet aircraft crashing. Brett, just moving on to second disaster, uh, Edmunds. Yeah. What I've, I've read your marvellous book, uh, what our, um, again, accidental, but things had moved. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, the uni were bought off. But what I couldn't get over, this, when you say, the people came from all over the show just to gawk. Just they to, did. You know, yeah. I, 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 you yeah. know Charles Dickens came. Yeah. Uh, well, he came before, like, I know, uh, uh, to look at... Uh, uh, Lundell, Charles Dickens, a famous uh, author. Right. Well, I'll say something about Dickens first, perhaps, because yeah. uh, it's not widely known that... Uh, well, it is known that Charles Dickens was always interested. So he's gathering information all the time. Yeah. He, he actually uh, owned and contributed to a magazine called The Household Words. Mm. So we're using a lot of this experience that yeah. he was getting yeah. in, in, in his writings. Yeah. Uh, all the time, and we know that in in at the end of eighteen the eighteen fifties about eighteen fifty nine in the summer, the railway system was working yeah. quite well then, and a party of uh, coal merchants decided to go on an excursion. You not believe <laughs> this day, but they had the choice of going to Paris, yeah, or Barnsley, oh. <laughs> and they chose. Barnsley, right. and they chose Barnsley because they wanted to see the pits where the coal that they were buying actually came from, and right. they'd heard about Lund Hill yeah. and about some of these terrible disasters. Mm. So a great party of them got on the train, and it appears that Dickens either latched onto or was a part of this group of people that arrived in Barnsley on yeah. a hot July morning in 1859 yeah. and he actually he actually went to um, Edmunds Main. That's what I'm coming yeah. to. That was three year Brian, 1859 to 1862, yeah, well, that's when it blew. Early on, yeah. that's... And he, he, he would, uh, it appears that he may well have gone underground, right. uh, both there and also um, at Lund at Lund Hill. Yeah. Um, he would have wanted to do that anyway. So that that was Dickens. That yeah. was that was one thing. Can you imagine all these <laughs> Londoners arriving in bars? I know. And a lot of local people couldn't understand them anyway. Yeah, yeah the, the particularly, dialect. Yeah. Particularly when they were being shown around, uh, <laughs> shown around the pit bottoms, etc. But, 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 but Frank, can you imagine? A few women came as well. And, with this yeah. Thing. 14,000 coming on that yeah, after, they, after, they, after to, to disaster. Un unfortunately. Queen Hart Dale, yeah, 14,000. Un unfortunately, yeah. uh, pits had become um, great great spectacles, tourist, mm. tourist attractions, mm. if you mm. like. Mm. And because of the, the, the new railways, it was possible uh, to get on a train or a couple of trains. Little or no health and safety mm. Uh, mm. restrictions in, in, mm. in, in those days. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so the outcome was that thousands of people came <laughs> to the to these disasters. I know. I know. And uh, you know, mingled with widows and and, and people in distressful Oof. distressful situations. Mm. So. Um, I was sad. I think for about fourteen thousand came. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, came up to um, uh, the Edmunds. Yeah, to, yeah. To, to the Edmunds. The Edmunds. Yeah, yeah. And when Edmunds, I must tell you this. Yeah. yeah. When Edmunds, Edmunds Main opened in the eighteen fifties, there were three uh, partners involved. A man called uh, John Tyus, Charles Bartholomew, and a local man yeah. called Joseph Mitchell. Yeah. And it was Mitchell who later became very important in uh, uh, Swayth, my mind. He lived at Swayth. At Swayth. Yeah. And obviously in the Woodwell area, yeah. in Mitchell, Maine. Yeah, yeah. One named after All the streets are named after him. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Mm. Very interesting and a uh, mm. pioneering uh, pit, pit owner. But when Edmunds opened, 
I don't know whether you've heard of the Great Exhibition of 1851. But oh, Prince Albert. It was a massive success. Mm. But they were holding a similar one in, in France, in Paris. Right. France again. And uh, what these uh, partners thought was, wouldn't it be a good idea if we got a big lump of coal from Edmund's Main, right. got it out of the pit, and took it to Paris to show Never. how good our coal was. Yeah. So what they did, Dave, they used gunpowder oh. to blast this huge piece of coal. Now this piece of coal weighed nine tons. I'm, I'm trying oh. to visualise it. A, 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 it were complete nine tons. Oh! Now the problem they got then is how to get it. I think it took shaft. Up the shaft. They were very ingenious for the Victorians. <laughs> so they set up lifting apparatus and gear, capstans and so on and gradually started hauling it up. Ah, uh, I didn't it, know that. Apparatus broke. And it, great big lump crashed down to the pit bottom. To some Roughly bottom 200 yard shot. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't know how far it got up uh, before uh, uh, it went so, down. So what happened then? What, what, it broke into two. <laughs> which were quite convenient. Yeah. Because now they've got a five ton piece. Five ton piece. And a four ton piece. Yeah. So what they did, they had another go. Yeah. And they got the five ton great big lump of coal, just the same. And they got that out of the shaft. Never. They loaded it onto a cart uh, yeah. with horses and it was taken away. Don't ask me how they got it to Paris, but apparently they did. They got this Edmunds being cold. Well, railway line. All the way to Paris. Railway line was here, like it that. Was great there, central. Yeah. yeah. But. Yeah. You've got to, I mean, the broke every rule about blasting oh, with gunpowder, yeah. yeah. which is totally, well, unbelievable. Yeah. So that was an interesting anecdote, uh, mm. really, about Edmund's Mead. Mm. And the other interesting thing about you talking about inquests, the inquest for Edmund's Mead took place mm. over about four days, and they got about 30 witnesses. And it must have been a very demanding a nervous thing for ordinary miners that survived or had to come along to give evidence you know at the time yeah uh, in front of uh, the jury and the, uh, the the coroner but one interesting thing happened afterwards and it had never really been done before this is that a lot of the widows got to, got together and they decided uh, to prosecute, try and prosecute the owners. Yeah. Because of the, obviously the loss that they yeah. incurred, not the personal loss and the financial loss that obviously they would have because of looking after children and so on and so forth. And there was a new Act of Parliament called the Fatal Accident Act oh, that right. was made in 1846, quite new. Yeah. So they used this Act to trigger off this litigation. For, for lit corporate manslaughter. The, the widows tried yeah. to get, it was an example, if you like, of, of women With rising power. up yeah, 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 at yeah. that time that's oh, probably right. been forgotten about. And some of the, winner, some of the widows, uh, they, they ought to get, and they got 34 lawsuits planned to go through the, the courts. Right. And it got to the stage where two were due to be held at York Assizes and the imminent, they were due to take place very, very quickly. So what the owners did, they offered £1,500 in compensation, not accepting mind you, any liability right. at all, mm. but they offered this sort of money. Now to give you an idea, that's approximately 90,000. I'm just going to ask you what's pro rata. So it's a fairly yeah. substantial sum. Uh, and uh, did they take it? They decided to withdraw, withdraw. The, withdraw their action. There were some changes by this time. The mines inspector had, had been uh, developed a lot, a lot more. Yeah. And locked safety lamps like this. I oh. mean, mine is used used candles in a lot of workings. But after a lot, of, after quite a lot of these disasters, um, 
safety lights were introduced. And, uh, and was that some, flame proof? Well, well, this, like Davy, yeah, the, the, really? the, the generic term was Davy lamp. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody that is a expert on mine lights knows there are a variety of them really. Stevenson lamps, Davy lamps and so on. I mentioned Byram and so on. But the, tr the trouble is the gauze that, that existed only emitted a, a, f a small amount of light. But another thing that happened um, on that particular Monday was that there was a, uh, a little uh, sporting stadium where they had uh, ground and whipping whip races. It was called Dilling. It was up at the top of Woodsburg ah. Column. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it was a, I think it, in those days it must have been a grass track. Yeah. And of course, I remember that. Maybe. Quite a lot of betting took. Oh yeah, place. Mm -hmm. And uh, they like going to watch the the <laughs> ground races. Yeah, so a lot yeah. of the miners were off. They were laking. Quite a lot of the miners went to see grounds, and. But for that, I think the, the the number of men underground on that Monday would have been greater, and the fatality list. Yeah. It was heard above ground, great big noise and yeah. bang. Everybody locally knew... It had fired. Mm. Smoke coming from the chimneys as well, they knew the pit had fired. And you can imagine doors flung open, People rushing, mm. rushing outdoors, rushing towards the mm. uh, the pit head. The pit head. Mm. Um, they were so sudden; it was like wiping an entire male population out yeah. overnight. You know, it mm. had a devastating effect on the local community. Mm. <laughs> I know that's been wonderful, Brian. Well, you thanks well, a lot, Bob. Uh, could I say thank to conclude, in Brian Elliott's words, these ill-fated collieries provided a place of work for hundreds of men and boys as well as profits for the coal owners. But what a cost to human life. The miners came from far and wide. Can you hear the widow's wail? They work the pits at Edmund, Swathe and Darley in the Dale. The Bairns have lost their fathers. Some say that it's a shame. The inquest at the Mason's Arms, the owners shift the blame. The Barnsley bed is silent now. The Jarrett's holds its breath. The epitaph says it all. In the midst of life, we are in death.